In this video, I am continuing my search for budget RC drift gyro options. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Troy and this is Roadside RC. If you follow the channel, you'll tend to find me drifting and bashing and crawling and racing, plus doing product review videos and how to's. And if you follow the channel, you'll see that I've been pretty passionate about trying to help feed people get started with rear wheel drive RC drifting on the cheap. And one of the ways is always looking at a gyro. Now, my go-to gyros, honestly, the Futaba GYD450, the new Rev D gyro, both of those really, really good. The Yokomo DP302 V4, also really, really good gyros. But all three of these are in that like 80 to $100 range. And so there's a lot of folks out there that are really interested in something maybe a little bit cheaper so in this video we are going to be looking at this power hobby g2 it's actually listed as a racing gyro but we're going to be this putting this in my sakura d5 drift car and seeing how it does this power hobby gyro it does come with a user's manual and it does come with a uh, little handy dandy tool for being able to push switches and to be able to set up the limit and gain here it does look like it has the normal plugs that you'll come on here so the female side is the one that'll go to the servo you have a three wire that'll go to your channel one and then the single wire will go to your channel three uh, there is instructions here and it actually does help lay out that which is really awesome it's nice that they actually do provide some instructions that way we can know what we're doing as we set it up i'm going to get this go ahead and get this installed just double-sided taped down to the chassis of the drift car there we go gyros installed with some double-sided tape right here on the bottom chassis nice solid rigid vibration free location as we noted before, the three wire plug, the female version, goes straight to the servo. The single wire goes straight to the channel three, and the three wire goes to channel one. I'm using this with my uh, Futaba radio setup, my Rev D servo, and I have a Hobby Wing ESC and motor that I'm running. So now what we need to do is we need to fire it up and we need to do the rest of the proper setup as it shows in the electronics with this g2 racing gyro with my controller on i'm going to hold down this mod button with the handy dandy tool while i turn the esc on we have a green and red flash i'm going to then turn my servo all the way to one side where i want to send set the endpoints using the controller i'm going to hit the button again gonna blink and now it has one solid green and one solid red and a blinking red now I'm gonna go the other direction set the steering endpoints I'm gonna hit that button again blink and now we're solid blink to initialize and we should be ready to go now let's see gyro appears to be active steering is in the normal direction right is right and left is left so that is all good now one thing I'm noticing is when I turn my steering wheel and then I let off, it does have a slow return function. And in the Futaba language, that's normally called AVCS, I'm noticing in the instructions, it actually says that there is a normal versus AVS mode. And it says while it's in working condition, we just fast press this button twice. It should go to flashing and it should switch into a different mode. Let's see what happens here. Oh yeah, so that's normal mode versus the slow return mode. Now I am a fan of the slow return, so I'm gonna put it back. Oh yeah, just like that. All right, endpoints are set. I've got the uh, AVCS set and it does appear that through my channel three setting on my controller, I am actually setting the gyro gain. So it appears I have a gyro gain. So I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna to go to zero and I'm gonna see, yes, gyro is no longer working. So I'm gonna crank that bad boy back. I'm gonna see what happens if I go positive or negative. Looks like it works the same either way. So that's good news, which means you do not need to have as fancy of a controller if you really want to be able to set this gyro up. Looks like it might work pretty well just as it is. So I'm gonna set this up about 70% as my baseline before we go out and drive it. 
So the gyro's in and calibrated to controller. And normally before I ever took a vehicle like this to the track with a change, I'd be testing it here in my garage. But two things. One, I have an impending track day, so I have opportunity to go test it out anyway. And then two, garage is kind of a mess at the moment. And so um, we're going to skip straight to going to the track. I'm still going to do some of the stuff that I would normally do, which is kind of like a circle. How well does it do a circle? How well does it do a figure eight? But then instead of going into my big C that I typically do here in the garage, I'm going to go just straight to on track. So let's me get all this packed up, head to the track, and we will see what the results are. super interesting thing is it feels a lot like the stock MST gyro so if you like the stock MST gyro then you can get the power hobby g2 for cheaper and have the exact same driving feel I'm actually pretty confident personally that the guts and the internals are actually the exact same and this that uh, they're boxed differently and housed differently and sold under different names but I'm actually pretty confident they're the same one based on how they drive, how they operate. And when you look at the instructions side by side, I think they're the same. So here's the simple answer. If you're considering either one of these, well, you might as well buy the cheap one. But if you're considering either one of these, I honestly believe you're considering the wrong gyros. And there are better gyros to be had for either the same amount of money or slightly more money. So I can't really recommend either one of them. 